Hello everyone and welcome to week 10 of this semester. So last week we looked at SAR data and this week we're going to switch gears and look at something called vegetation indices. And this is going to be some context background information for our lab exercise today. So last week we did look at radar data and images rather and this week we're going to look at um, hyperspectral images. So what is NDVI, Normalized Difference Vegetation Index? Maybe you've heard of it before um, in some GIS courses. This week, we're going to learn about Normal Difference Vegetation Index. So from here on out, I'll call it NDVI. Um, the near infrared band minus the red band, and then it's divided by near infrared band or red band um, will create two things. So that's the formula. And so these two things that it creates is it reduces the number of bands and also it gives the index for the vegetation. So I know that doesn't mean much at the moment, but um, we'll, we'll get there. Because we are using the near infrared band and red band here and then near infrared and red band here um, above and below. So using this type of indexing, we can look at the condition of the vegetation and whether it's struggling from some kind of stresses. So the whole point of vegetation index is to assess the vegetation of an area. And so we're doing that by analyzing the images. So, um, and if vegetation is affected by some kind of stressor, lack of water, um, climate change, etc., then we will shift from infrared to the red, and that means the longer wavelengths to shorter wavelengths. Uh, so it basically changes, um, it basically is the change in the chlorophyll content. That's what we're analyzing when we look at um, the different images. So that's why the vegetation index becomes very important. So here we have two trees. Uh, one is really healthy and one is dying. And so if the near infrared is giving 50% component and then invis invisible, we, we just have 8% component. In this case of healthy vegetation, we see an NDI, NDVI index uh, of about 0.72. Um, so approximately 0 0.72 would be the index value. Um, so and then inversely, whereas in the case of the tree on the right, it's kind of, you know, st um, struggling to survive, whether it's lack of water, um, poor soil conditions, the time of year. Um, so in the case of this vegetation that is under stress, um, then the visible component has increased very significantly and because chlorophyll content has reduced and therefore the near infrared reflection by the vegetation will reduce and therefore our NDVI index becomes only 0 0.14. So you can see the higher the NDVI index value, the um, healthier the vegetation is. That's what's represented by that value. And then inversely, a lower NDVI value means unhealthy vegetation or uh, lower chlorophyll content, rather. So in that way, we can assess the conditions of vegetation because of these changes in the chlorophyll content um, deciphered from the images. Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 10 of this semester. So last week we looked at SAR data, and this week we're going to switch gears and look at something called vegetation indices. And this is going to be some context background information for our lab exercise today. So last week we did look at radar data and images rather, and this week we're going to look at um, hyperspectral images. So what is NDVI, Normalized Difference Vegetation Index? Maybe you've heard of it before um, in some GIS courses. This week, we're going to learn about Normal Difference Vegetation Index. So from here on out, I'll call it NDVI. Um, the near infrared band minus the red band, and then it's divided by near infrared band or red band um, will create two things. So that's the formula. And so these two things that it creates is it reduces the number of bands and also it gives the index for the vegetation. So I know that doesn't mean much at the moment, but um, we'll, we'll get there. Because we are using the near infrared band and red band here and then near infrared and red band here um, above and below. 
So using this type of indexing, we can look at the condition of the vegetation and whether it's struggling from some kind of stresses. So the whole point of vegetation index is to assess the vegetation of an area. And so we're doing that by analyzing the images. So, um, and if vegetation is affected by some kind of stressor, lack of water, um, climate change, et cetera, then we will shift from infrared to the red, and that means longer wavelengths to shorter wavelengths. Uh, so it basically changes, um, it basically is the change in the chlorophyll content. That's what we're analyzing when we look at um, the different images. So that's why the vegetation index becomes very important. So here we have two trees. Uh, one is really healthy and one is dying. And so if the near infrared is giving 50% component and then invis invisible, we, we just have 8% component. In this case of healthy vegetation, we see an NDI, NDVI index uh, of about 0 0.72. Um, so approximately 0 0.72 would be the index value. Um, so and then inversely, whereas in the case of the tree on the right, it's kind of, you know, um, struggling to survive, whether it's lack of water, um, poor soil conditions, the time of year. Um, so in the case of this vegetation that is under stress, um, then the visible component has increased very significantly. And because chlorophyll content has reduced and therefore the near infrared reflection by the vegetation will reduce. And therefore our NDVI index becomes only 0 0.14. So you can see the higher the NDVI index value, the um, healthier the vegetation is. That's what's represented by that value. And then inversely, a lower NDVI value means unhealthy vegetation or uh, lower chlorophyll content rather. So in that way, we can assess the conditions of vegetation because of these changes in the chlorophyll content um, deciphered from the images. So in this slide, we see two images. One on the left is um, showing the average NDVI of UK, Ireland, some parts of Europe from June 2003. And then on the right is the same area, but it's rep it's representing October 2003. So it shows the, N the average NDVI values, um, you know, about four months later. And so, you know, the image on the right, it's October so winter is approaching and the vegetation is getting dried. And the result of this shows the NDVI values are getting low. And in some parts they are near zero or 0 0.1 or a little bit up to 2.5 or 2.6. So you could see where the unhealthy vegetation is. So that way the conditions of vegetations can be assessed very quickly and apply two channels, the near infrared channel, which gives the best reflection if vegetation is healthy and the red channel, because if there is a change in the chlorophyll content, then the reflection will shift from near infrared to red. So from longer wavelengths to shorter wavelengths. So this shift in the red edge can give us a lot of clues about vegetation condition. You can see the image on the left in June is um, far higher ND NDVI values, meaning healthier vegetation. So index, what does this mean? The index is a sign or a measure of something. Um, and so in that way, especially when people are working on global climactic change and other things on global scales and basically focusing on vegetation changes, NDB, NDVI has become a very powerful tool to assess the changes due to climate or global warming. So there are many variations, variants of these vegetation indices. So some may give some the same results, but nonetheless, people make us uh, people make use of basically inverse relationships between red and near infrared reflection. And so that leads me to the indices. So there are many vegetation indice indices with many being functionally equivalent. Uh, many of the indices make us make use of the inverse, sorry, make use of the inverse relationship between red and near infrared reflectance associated with healthy green vegetation or chlorophyll content. So after we started getting satellite data, um, probably after Landsat satellite data, there were other sat satellites later part of the 60s. Scientists have used this remote sensing data to monitor changes in vegetation. 
So we are basically measuring the vegetation attributes, which include leaf area, index, LAI, which is LAI, um, then percent green cover, chlorophyll content, green biomass, absorbed photosynthetically active radiation, APAR. So many such products are being generated through different calculations, but the fundamental remains the same. So vegetation indices uh, have been historically classified based on a range of attributes, including the number of spectral bands, two or greater than two. The method of calculations, ratio of orthogonal, depending on the required objective, which you will read about in this week's uh, reading assignments. Um, and so, yeah, you'll learn more about that from the text or by their historical development, classified as first generation VIs or second generation VIs, vegetation indices. For the sake of comparison of the effectiveness of different VIs, um, there, are sex, there are seven VIs based on their computation methods, subtraction, or there are several VIs based on their computation methods, um, subtraction, division, or rational transform. Due to advances in hyperspectral remote sensing technology, high resolution reflectance spectrums are now available, which can be used with traditional multispectral VIs. So as the system and technologies have developed, so have more um, VIs. There are various types of multispectral vegetation indices. We have normalized different vegetation index, which we're talking about today, leaf water content index, Kyle Thomas tasseled cap transformation, infrared index, greenness above bare soil, moisture stress index, and then soil adjusted vegetation index. So um, SAVI. I don't expect you to memorize these, uh, just rather understand the fundamentals behind these indices. And so today we are going to discuss in detail the soil adjusted vegetation index during the lab exercise. And so the most common vegetation index that I will discuss now as context for our lab exercise is the NDVI. Um, the NDVI is a simple graphical indicator that can be used to analyze remote sensing measurements and ex ac access whether the, and assess whether the target being observed contains live green vegetation or not. So it's, again, it's looking at the chlorophyll content. So that means it, it contains good amount of chlorophyll, chlorophyll content or not. The NDVI is equal to NRI, uh, sorry, NIR minus red divided by NIR plus red. So where red and near infrared stand for the spectral reflectance measurements acquired in the red, so the visible and the near infrared, the invisible regions of the spectrum respectively. So this is an image of Australia. It's a six month NDVI average uh, between 1st of December, 2012 to 31st of May, 2013. In NDVI, it includes the photosynthesis, which requires water, carbon dioxide, and light in order to produce sugars and oxygen. So that's a big part of it. So by looking at such products, we can clearly assess that the east coast of Australia um, have, has a good amount of vegetation, and the remaining parts are almost desert. This is an average of those six months. So in N Chlorophyll, which gives the plant their green color, absorbs visible light, which is why we don't have much reflection in the visible part of the spectrum. But at the same time, it leaves the leaves of the re vegetation reflex more in the near infrared part of the EM spectrum. And because of this inverse relationship between visible and near infrared of vegetation reflection, this means that a healthy plant with good photosynthesis synthesis activity can be analyzed by comparing near infrared and visible red light, and that is what is done in the NDVI. So chlorophyll, which gives the plant their green color, absorbs visible light, which is why we don't have much reflection in the visible part of the spectrum, but at the same time, it leaves the leaves of the vegetation reflex more in the near infrared part of the EM spectrum. And so just emphasize that. So plants struggling from stresses relating to water or other resources, um, so unhealthy vegetation is what we're going to call that, will reflect more in the visible light and less in the near infrared. 
So healthy vegetation, inversely, will absorb more of the visible light falling on it. And that's why when you see the visible bands from these sensors on board of different satellites, we find that vegetation will actually generally appear dark. So the NDVI ranges are important, and we'll also look at this in our lab exercise for the SAVI indices. But uh, they range between 0 and 1 due to normalization procedure. So the very low values, less than 0.1, rock, sand, or snow, means there is hardly any vegetation or chlorophyll content. Freestanding water tends to be in the very low positive to negative values. Soils tend to generate rather small NDVI values, 0.1 to 0.2. And sparse vegetation, such as shrubs and grasslands, may result in moderate NDVI values, so 0.2 to 0.5. There are some drawbacks to the NDVI indices. Um, brightness and color of soil play an important part in images and different bands, as well as atmospheric conditions like cloud cover and leaf canopy shadow, because there are plants and trees and they will have their own shadows on other trees as well. So that can be impacted. So we have to be careful. This is one of the drawbacks of NDVI. Another problem with NDVI is that in dense vegetation, it quickly reaches saturation. That means it reaches to value 0.1 to 0.9 very quickly. And therefore, the assessments or the variations in, case of dense in the case of dense vegetation, um, it, it, th that vegetation becomes difficult to assess. So the NDV And the NDVI is nonlinear, see? So that is the issue here with NDVI and one of the drawbacks as well. Okay, so now let's practice this in the real world with using our ArcGIS Pro. We are going to do our own uh, vegetation in index today, or this week rather, uh, but we're using SAVI. And so you can now um, close this and look at the lab exercise. Thanks.